You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Oh, right, all right, all right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is Reverend Ray. This is the Bread of Life. Amen. Uh, today on this Sunday, amen, we are so excited about what God is going to talk about and do. Praise God. We are broadcasting live, amen, from the Washington, D.C. area. We pray that you will call. You can call in. The number is 646-478-0660. Amen. We're going to go ahead and get started by the minute. We're going to play a couple of announcements and stuff like that. But we're going to talk about this thing. We talked about this last Sunday, and God is leading me to, to, to bring it back up again about um, our Father, and what I did is I went back and I edited it and put our father, my father, because Jesus called God his father first. So we're going to get into some details about that. We're going to get into the detail about the prayer. I think this is a definite word uh, for the season and the time that he's in. I know that it blessed me last week, and I pray that it would also bless bless you. So I want to go ahead and play a couple of quick announcements and stuff that we got coming up. Amen. Let me make sure I turn to the page. I want to also let you know that you can listen to the broadcast in its entirety after the the, the, the the show is finished by either going to Blog Talk Radio, iTunes, or WhenChristianSpeak.com, or any the other um, places that we're on. We're on quite a few. So, amen. Even on social media, we'll be posting on social media also. Amen. So let's go ahead and play this real quick, and uh, we'll be back in a minute. We'll say a word of prayer. Amen. Join us for our weekly broadcast, His Abounding Grace, with Minister Vanessa Williams. That's every Tuesday at 7 p.m. On Wednesday afternoons at 1 p.m., join Reverend Gwendolyn Dixon for the Midday Glory Prayer Line. The dial-in number is 641-715-3580. The access code is 732-499. And Wednesday nights at 7 p.m., Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you. That's with Pastor Paul Morgan of Chosen Generation Ministries in Richmond, Virginia. On Thursdays, live at 12 noon, join Rev. Pat Randall for Declaring the Finished Work. For an hour of worship, exhortation, and prayer. Reverend Ray and friends are here on Friday nights at 7 p.m. with the joy of the Lord on Friday Night Joy. Sundays at 7 p.m., join Reverend Ray for Bread of Life for a word in season. And don't forget our monthly broadcast. First Mondays of every month at 7 p.m., Be blessed with the teaching ministry of Apostle Shirley Jones on Lifeline. On third Mondays at 7 p.m., join Evangelist Louis McElwain for Adoration, a broadcast of worship and ministries on the mission field. Second Saturdays of the month at 10 a.m., join Reverend Curtis, Reverend Novena and Jordana for Bold and Beautiful, a youth and young adult broadcast setting the world on fire with the love of Jesus. And on four Saturdays, Alabaster Box at 7 p.m. with Prophetess Carla Johnson, where she shares a broad range of topics to help believers persevere and overcome. All broadcast times our Eastern Standard Time. Amen. Welcome back, everybody. Again, this is when Christian Speak Talk Radio. I'm your host, Ray, Reverend Ray. This is the Bread of Life segment. Amen. And we are going to go ahead and have a word of prayer. Our topic tonight is Our Father, My Father. Amen. Um, and this is part two. 
Amen. So, Father God, we come today just to give you thanks. Thank you for your many grace. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for the things that you are doing in our life, God. Thank you, God, for every trial, every tribulation. Thank you even for our Judas, God, because we know this, that all those things are opportunities for us to see how great and and wonderful and how merciful and how, how much of a healer, deliverer, God, that you are. So we will trust in you, Holy Spirit, God. We will believe in you. We will lean on you and not on our own understanding, God. But we will get to a place, God, we will pray that you would just have your way. Holy Spirit, we come, God, today, Lord Jesus, presenting ourselves to you as a living and sight sacrifice a living epistle so that men can re- read not us but read and see you we pray that in this message today reach out and touch the many lord jesus and touch even the few or touch those that need god whatever there is that they need we pray lord jesus that your mess the message today god will would just go and prick the hearts of men and women all across the world, God. That somebody would cry, well, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to change my life? That somebody might understand that there is a bomb in Gilead, and that that bomb, Lord Jesus, is you. So, God, we give this message, this broadcast to you, and we thank you for every single person that will be listening there, and for those that will be sharing, and those, God, that will be healed, and those that will be delivered, whoever and wherever they may be, God. We pray, God, that the church, God, universe may wake up and understand the season and the time that we are living in now, that we will begin to understand, Jesus, that you are soon to come back, God. And I don't know about anybody else, but I can speak for myself. As for me and my house, we want to be ready. We want to serve you. We want everything to be good, Lord Jesus. We want you to look at us and say, well done. So, Father, we pray today. There'll be an urgency in all of us, God, that I say that we are born again believers, that say that we are Christians, God, that we will change our ways, that we will get to a point where we will bow down and worship, we will turn from our wicked ways, that we will seek your face, God, that the healing of a nation may take place. For truly, we're living in a land and in a country, in a world that healing needs to take place. So we pray, come, Holy Spirit. Come with all your might and your glory, and you do what is ever is necessary, God. And we will forever to give your name all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor in Christ Jesus' name, the resurrected Savior. We say amen and amen and amen. Again, everyone, I want to welcome you uh, to the broadcast. Amen. We had some people still, that was in the studio um, calling, and we welcome you. We pray that this broadcast today will be a blessing. Amen. We, what we're going to do first, we go, I want to go back to Luke um, chapter 11, because this is where we are. We actually started from. And this was a prayer that uh, Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray. The most we call it the Lord's Prayer, but the Lord's Prayer actually took place. <laughs> actually, took place in the in the garden and everything that was considered. But this is a prayer because the disciples wanted to, the, the, Jesus to teach them. So this is the prayer that, that Jesus told them how to pray. You know, and it's, and it, this is what it says. I'm gonna go, go down go right into it because I would um, advise you to go back and listen to uh, part one of this, and you you can see where we was going. It says, and he said unto them, when ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, as it in as it is as it in heaven, so in earth. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive our sins us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that indebted to us. And lead us not um lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You know, and it says and he said it to him, which of you shall have a friend that should go into him in the midnight and it goes into the prayer. Amen. So we wanna we wanna go back to our father. We're gonna break this down a lot. Don't know how long we're gonna do this. Amen. Amen. But when we think about our uh, Father God, He and one of the things I liked about it when Jesus said, "Our Father," He didn't say, "My Father." So He, our Father, means that He's including the, all of us in this when He says, "Our Father," and that's a very important thing, and everything. And I want to read a couple uh, the uh, scriptures that I have pulled out. Let me make sure I got them all. Amen. And we're gonna go somewhere. We're gonna talk about it. 
for just for a little bit, and then we we're gonna move on because that the, the purpose of our Father is to let them know what that we belong to God, that we belong to Him. You know, not only is God our Creator, but He's our Father. Now Jesus made the distinction. Uh, between how you can tell when God is our father with the devil. He had a conversation with the uh, the uh, the, uh, the leaders of the time that day and everything, and, and um, they was under the assumption that um, they Abraham was their father and, and, and God was Abraham's father, for God was their father. But Jesus corrected them and said, well, if you accepted Abraham, but you want to accept me? He had, he is someone that is even greater than Abraham, and I'm paraphrasing. That's more in front, more important. So you don't really accept God and everything. So then he began to tell him. He said, "Your your father is of the devil. Your father is not the God, not the God that I that my, not my father. Because if it had truly been my father, then you would receive me and everything. But instead, you was trying to kill me. In other words, it was gotten to a point." where they were actually trying to stone him. But I want to go back into the, the place where I was talking about for about our father. And there's a couple of uh, scriptures, particularly in Psalms, amen, that stood out to me and everything. And the first one is looking at Psalms 27.10. And this is what it says. It says, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord would take me up. He said, when my, my father and my mother forsake me, he said, he said the Lord, then the Lord who... The Almighty God would take me up. Then the Lord, our Father, you know, He was He would adopt us. He was to say uh, He would adopt us and everything, and we'd be classified as His children, just like the children of Israel were considered. Uh, the children of Israel considered to be God's people and everything. He became an our Father for them, even though they kept messing up and everything. Well, that same principle holds true even now. Okay, the once we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, God is our Father. Then one of the things that Jesus said, and I'm, I'm going to skip it around a little bit, is that he said that no man can come to the Father except through him. Okay, so you can't go and, and claim God if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Okay, you can't go and say, I've claimed God unless you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Uh... And, and in fact, in Matthew 10, 2, it says, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, will I also confess before my Father, which is his heaven. You know? So in other words, if you accept Jesus, you confess Jesus Christ, then he's going to, in turn, confess God, Father, he's one of a house. You know, <laughs> he's going to confess. And that's, that's awesome. Then verse uh, in, in Matthew 11 and 27 says, All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son. And this is what I was talking about before. No man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither know any man, man the Father, save the Son. You can't help one without the other. And he says, and he, and, and he to whosoever the Son will reveal himself. In other words, Jesus need to be able to reveal himself to you to recognize who he is. Then you were, and that did not take place when he was talking to the, the, the Pharisees and the leaders of the time. They didn't even recognize that they were looking at the, 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 the son of the living God. The Jews at the time didn't recognize. In fact, they called him a devil or said that he must be a devil. And he said to them, Satan cannot possibly kill be a kingdom divided and everything. You know, and then he began to tell them about the works that he was doing. The thing that I liked about this more so than anything, he said, um, in Matthew twelve and fifty, he said, But whosoever will do the will of my father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. He said, The same, y'all. So how do we become um uh, a brother uh, to Christ? Uh, how do we become um because to a place that God is our Father. First, we already know we got to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Okay, but I'm not, and I really don't want to get into detail because there's more than just doing that. Okay, I right. there's a little bit more than some extra steps and things that has to take place, you know, and everything that that will take place. And we talk about sanctification and uh, talk about the Holy Spirit and those kind of things. But he again, I want to read this. Says, but who said you the will of my Father? So that right there, right out of the back, how do we? get into the, the place where we can re- and say our father or my father, my father, God. And that's by doing the will of the father. Okay. 
<laughs> by doing the will of the Father, of doing, being obedient to the teaching and the words of Jesus Christ. We automatically, you know, because we are doing those things and we have accepted them, we automatically uh, adopt it right into the kingdom. We become like the Jews of old and everything, uh, or, or Israelites, in other words. We become just like that. In fact, the Bible talks about that I'm a Jew. You know, and I'm not a Jew because I was born into to the thing, but I was grafted into it because when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he didn't just die for the Jews, but he died for the whole world. But it still goes back to the place where we have to be able to, to accept the message of our Lord and our Savior. He says, for whosoever should do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same as my brother and my sister. That means that no matter, and my mother, that means that no matter, and my mother, going back to songs, amen. Going back to Psalm 27, it says, no matter whether my mother or my fa- father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. How? Because I'm doing his will. I'm obedient to his voice. Jesus said that in the Bible, he said that my sheep hears and knows my voice, and another they won't follow. You know, so when we get to that place of the relationship, and I talked about this a, a while back, and that intimacy with God, the father knows, we know the father's voice. We know Jesus' voice. You know, we know that they are one and the same. He told um, some, one of the disciples, actually, well, show us the Father. He got, he, and he said to them, he said, look, have I been with you so long, you know, that you don't recognize that the Father, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You know, he said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The Father been walking with you all the time. And then he goes on and say, I don't do anything, y'all, without the Father giving me, giving me what to say. He, he, he taught me or teaches me all things to do anything to, and to say. In other words, everything miracle that Jesus said was, was taught to him by God. Then he do it through the unction of the Holy Spirit. And that same Holy Spirit that Jesus had w- with us and stuff like that is also available to us if we put it to good use. You know, if we take it off the shelf and let God be God in our life and everything. And to understand that he is our father. Uh, Psalms 89 and 26 says, he said, cry unto me, thou art my father, my God and the rock of my salvation. Oh, man, that ought to make you shout right there. That he said, cry unto me, thou art my father. Did you know that God is our father and he's the rock of our salvation? So we're so busy with other stuff, but if he's the rock of my salvation, that if God is the rock of my salvation, if Jesus is the rock of my salvation, nothing in this world will be able to stand against us. Nothing. That's powerful in itself. Okay, let's read some more. I want to, um, where are we going? Amen. Let's go to, amen. Amen. Where am I? Amen. Amen. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is coming out. Let's go. I tell you what. Let's go ahead and do John. Um, we're looking at. Uh, we're gonna go to chapter eight in a minute, but I want to read something. Uh, and this is John chapter six, um, verse sixty-five. It says, "And he said, therefore I say unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto the Father." There it is again. No man can come unto Jesus except it was given, except the Father has to draw him, except the, the, the given to the Father. You know, he also talks about in John um, 6, verse 32, he said, he said, verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not the bread from heaven, but my Father gave you the true bread from heaven. You know, and he said, my Father gave you the true bread, who, who is Jesus Christ. It's the true bread. They didn't recognize that the true bread, the living bread, the living water was in their presence. And the question becomes to us, do you know who our Father is? Do we know who, who God is to us? You know, are we being obedient to the things that he has instructed us to do? Are we just going through the, 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 going through the process of just going through the motions of, of church and business as usual? Are we, we are in, in a place of not just of entertainment, but we just going through the Ricky Maroon of saying, okay, I'm, I'm today, Sunday, got to go to church. But do, is there a relationship with him? And, you know, is there a relationship with him? And is, does he have a relationship with you? You know, another thing that I, I talked about a couple of centuries ago is that about having the oil in your in your in your in in your lamp and everything. Is there oil in your lamp? 
Are you running on dry and everything? Do you need to refill before the the the, the, the bridegroom gets here? Amen. Now let's go. And I want to look at John chapter eight because there's a lot of things that was going on in John chapter eight. And what you're going to find out, this is what I was talking about earlier. What you're going to find out, Amen, in John chapter eight that uh a lot there's uh, <laughs> there's a lot of things going on. And Jesus start talking about my my father uh, actually in John chapter six and everything. But we're gonna focus on John chapter eight. Amen. And it says I'm gonna read um let's start from the beginning, verse one, man. Because there's a lot of like I said there's a lot of stuff and this is what led up to him talking about his my father. Okay. It says Jesus went into the Mount of Olives and early in the morning, y'all, early in the morning he came again to the temple. And all the people came unto him and he sat down and taught them. Okay. He sat early in the morning. For y'all early rising, he went to the temple early in the morning. He had church early in the morning and everything. Okay. And it says that and the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, when they in other words, they physically set her in the midst of Jesus, they said unto him, Master, now you know and I know they didn't really mean that. Okay. But they was really being ugly because they didn't never consider Jesus to be their master. In fact, they they questioned everything about his. They even questioned his authority. But let's read on, okay? They said to him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Wait a minute. They caught this woman in adultery in the very act. You know, well, my question right here, and I'm not trying to get off subject, we're still talking about how do you know? How do you know that you that she was in the very act unless she was looking? And that's that's the scary stuff. If, if her to be caught in the act, that means they had to be looking. They had to be watching. And then at the same time, the question becomes, you have the woman, but where's the man? You know, where's the other party, you know, that was involved? And the Old Testament, they, they were supposed to be stoned. Now, let me read on to verse 5. We're going to get through this, okay? It says, now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what says thou? Then they already know that what Moses said. But this is what they, they uh, see, I'm skipping about. It says, verse 6 says, this, they say, tempting him, that they might have, have a way to accuse him. But the Bible says, but Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Now, my question, because I'm the type of person where I am, I always wanted to know, what did he write on the ground? Because the Bible never said. But he wrote on the ground as though he heard them not, because he knew what they were doing. In fact, he probably knew details about them to the point that they were looking, or maybe she had something on him, on them too, you know, that they were up there looking and everything because they caught it in the eye. You know, what kind of thought process went through them, their mind when they found her in the very act of adultery? What was that thought process, you know? Did they put on an air to make it seem like it was worse than anything else? What type of thing that had taken place in their life that had yet to be uncovered? And again, the question comes like, well, what happened to the dude? Dude, man, we're not about his business. They didn't say nothing about the dude. Either the dude had something on them <laughs> or the dude went into a hiding, you know? Either he had something on them, and they said, well, we can't do it, but we can do her and stuff like that. But it doesn't say anything about her defending herself or anything like that. So let's, that's something for another day. But let's go on. Verse 6, again, 8 and 6, John 8, 6. Then they attempt to accuse him, but Jesus stooped down with his finger and wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continue asking, they they, they were... <laughs> were bold. They just kept on asking him. So that when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said it to him, said it to them, he that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her. He said, he that is without sin among you, let them cast the first stone at her. Cast the first stone. You ain't got no sin in your life. Cast the first cast a stone at it. And verse 8 says, again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground again. <laughs> again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. You know, he, he he went back to what he was doing when they first came with this nonsense. And in, in, in our life, sometimes we got to uh, <laughs> imagine doing something to ignore people that are asking us questions that they already know the answer to, but trying to, you know, especially as preachers, as ministers of the gospel, but 
even as um, as people of God, we have to be very careful when people come at us with really crazy uh, questions or thought process or or dialogue or whatever and everything. And that's what I like about the Bible. It says, let our yeas be yeas and our nay be nays and everything. Because sometimes people come to us, want to get us into a, a, a discussion that is not uh, rightfully so, or it's not designed by God for us to get into and if they, because the purpose of it is to, to 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 trip us up, so to speak. Okay, it says there. So then, when they continue asking, he lifted up himself and said to him, "He did without sin among you. Let him cast a stone at her." And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest. Those that had lived a long time, those that had did some stuff, those that had stuff in their closet, you know, that didn't nobody know about, those that might have told some some couple of white lies, <laughs> those that might, in our case, those that might have cheated on their income tax, those that might have lusted in their heart for that for that particular woman, you know, those that had, <laughs> had went down to the strip club and everything and put dollar bills, you know, and went out of town to do it, <laughs> went out of town to. Do to put, strip, strip, put dollar bills in somebody's bikini and stuff like that. Those you know, that didn't nobody know about. Those that had taken um, um, pictures with the cameras, and I'm, I'm, of course I'm going further with this, pictures with the camera, and thought nobody would find out about it until somebody had their phone in the show up all across social media. All of those things. He said they begin to, to be at the eldest even until the last. So the eldest begin to leave out. Because they, when they begin to get um, convicted in their heart, they realize, look, being, we don't have any kind of stones to throw at her because there's stuff that you don't know about me that we have done before. So they begin to leave us to the eldest, to the last. And the last men were those that were younger. You know, and maybe they, even they, no matter how what they and how young, I'm not going to talk about how, even they had stuff in their closet. And Jesus was left. Uh, the Bible says, and Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. There was nobody around Jesus except for the woman. And the woman still standing in the midst. Now, um, if you go back um, to the beginning of what I said, uh, what they did is they, they, they back to verse 3. And check this out. This is very important. It says, and the scribes of the first, he brought unto him a woman taking her daughter, and when they had set her in the midst. <laughs> you catch that? In verse 3, they set her in the midst. But now she's standing. Can you imagine the amazement that was taking place in her life when she they, she knew that she was going to get stoned? She knew that she was out of it, you know? But the, 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 the amazing thing that took place in the presence, in the midst of Jesus, her accusers had to go away from the eldest to the least, to the last. They had to go away. So in the process of that, she was no longer sat down, but she stood up. You know, and she saw that she saw these people leaving that was willing to kill her and never asked about the man, but she saw these people leaving, man. Leaving out. Let me read on. And when Jesus lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said it to her. This is verse 10. He said, Woman, where are thy accusers? Have no man condemned thee? He said, Woman, where are the accusers? Have no man condemned thee. And she's looking around, and they're all gone. They're all gone. And this is the, the thing that God, and this is what we're talking about, our Father. This is what God doesn't want to condemn us. But he wants us to know and stuff like that we, that we, we are forgiven. He wants us to know that Jesus Christ paid a great price at the cross for our sins. He wants us to know that all we got to do is come to him and be in his midst. So here's this woman in the midst of Jesus, and he asks her the question, where are your accusers? You know, have no man condemned thee? They all gone. Verse 11 said, and she said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. He gave her instructions and told her, the first thing he said, go. And then he said to her, sin no more. He says that he said to her, he said, I don't condemn you. You know, go right, and sin no more. Don't do it again. In other words, learn from this. You know, you know, if I 
and, and the, with the father and the father with me, if I don't condemn you, if our father, if my father don't condemn you, then our father won't condemn you and everything. He said, he's not, he, in other words, I'm not condemning you, okay, and sit no more. Then, then verse 12 says, then spake Jesus unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follow me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have light of life. He said, I am the light of the world. Guess what, y'all? If he is the light of the world, and we have accepted him, and he is the son of the living God, and we have accepted him. I just read that God said that we are his sons and his daughters and everything. So that means that we have the light of the world. We are the light of the world. Everything that Jesus declared for himself, guess what? It was meant for us also. And then verse 13, 13 says, the Pharisees therefore said unto him that they came back. <laughs> but they came back, okay, of course they're coming back. The Pharisees said, said, unto him, said unto him, thou bearest record of thyself. That record is not true. In other words, you talking about yourself, you boasting and bragging about yourself. And it, 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 uh, where's your proof? In other words, you know, well, you know, how are you going to elevate yourself like that? You ain't been in no schooling. You ain't got this. You don't got none of this stuff. But you're going to put yourself in this place of like that, like you got. Let's read on. And Jesus answered and said to him, though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whither I go. But you cannot tell whence I came, I come, and whither I go. You judge after the flesh. I judge no man. See, he just said that. He said, you judge after the flesh. They had just judged this woman after the flesh and everything and uh, <laughs> without even looking at themselves. You know, judge you lest you be judged, <laughs> that kind of thing. He said, and yet, if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I, but I and the Father that have sent me. He said, I'm not alone in this. God sent me. My father sent me. He said, my father. But again, you, and when we go back to Luke, he said for us to pray, our father. Again, it's all inclusive. So what does that, that, that mean? You know, that means y'all that we belong to God. I mean, let me read on. He says, it's also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. He said, I am one that bear witness of my, myself, and the father that sent me bear witness of me. He said, I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bear witness of me. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye know, neither know my father, you neither know me, nor my father. If ye had known me, you should have known my father. <laughs> they said, Where is his life? You don't know me. If, if you don't know me, you're not going to know my father. If you had known me, you would have known my father. But you don't know me. And everything, because those things were hitting from them and stuff. They were too busy trying to kill him. They weren't even looking at the fact of the miracles and the stuff that he was doing. You know, he said in the Bible, he said, look, if you don't believe me, believe for the work that I do. You know, they weren't willing to give him that. Instead, they looked at him and called him a Bezabub, you know. <laughs> they called him a devil. Said he had a devil in him. Okay, let me read on. Um, it says that, uh, verse 26, eight, John 8 and 26, these words make Jesus in the treasure as he taught in the temple. Remember, he's still in the treasure. He's still in the temple. And no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. No man laid hands on him, because his hour has not yet come. Then said Jesus again to them, I go my way, and you shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whether I go, you cannot come. Now, you know that's messing with this, that head right about here. Okay, this is really messing with their head. He said, then said, then said the Jews, will he kill himself? Because he said, whether I know you cannot come. He said anything about doing himself any kind of harm. When he said, I go my own, I go my way. You know, in other words, I got work to do. I don't have time to be messing with you. You should seek me and you should die in your sins because you're not willing to accept who I am and who father is and the fact that my father in me and I'm in my father that we are one. You're not willing to accept those things. You're really to kill this woman for after her daughter, but yesterday you had to walk away when I called you to the carpet on, on it. And you never really repent. You know what? No one came to the woman, you know what, and said, we are sorry. You know, that we should have looked at our own stuff first. No one did that. Okay. All right. Let's go to verse 23. It says, uh, it says, and he said it to him, you are from beneath. And this is where it gets, gets, gets good, y'all. He said, you are from beneath. 
I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. You know, he, it, right there, he said, I am not of this world. And we got to understand that we are ambassadors of Christ. If you have some Jesus Christ and you have him in your the Holy Spirit, you are an ambassador for Christ. Man, you ain't of this world and everything. We don't have to, we should be um, concerned about the cares of this world. That's said we're in the world, but we're not of the world, you know. You know, and so our, our whole thought process changed. We're different. We should be like a peculiar treasure that God said that we are. Yeah, we should be like that type of person, that type of environment. That we are, we're strange. <laughs> we're strange. The, the people of the world, the system of the world, don't understand where we're coming from and stuff like that. You know, because we are a mystery to them because we belong to to a, another kingdom. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. You know, you know, we don't think the same thing. Our prayer are different. Everything about our work, how we work is different. How we live is different. Everything is different. We are new creatures in Christ Jesus. Okay? We are new creatures in Christ Jesus. He said it to him, you are beneath and I am from above. You are of this world and I am not of this world. He said, I said there, said therefore unto you that you should die in your sins. For you, if you believe not that I am he, you should die in your sins. If you don't believe that I'm the son of the living God, if you don't believe that I am, if you don't believe <laughs> that I come to take away the sins of the world, you will die in your sins. Don't care how much money you got in the bank. Don't care where you come from. Don't care who your family is. Don't care how much religion you got. Don't care how many degrees you got behind your knees, your name, how many MDs, DM, whatever, and stuff you got. You will die in your sins because you don't believe in Jesus Christ. That's the Bible. I'm not saying it. Jesus is saying it. He said, you will die in your sins. <laughs> you know, he said, you are believe I'm from above. You are in this right He said, I said this. Therefore unto you, that you should die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, you should die in your sins. Okay. Then he said unto him, who art, then they said unto him, who art thou? And Jesus said unto them, even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. He said, I have many things to say to, to judge of you, but he that sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. You know, I have, in other words, I can really tell you a lot right now, and stuff, but I'm only going to speak what God has taught, taught me to say. You know, I'm only going to speak what God has taught me to say. Like he told Nicodemus, he said, look, listen, man, you are a ruler of, uh, of the temple, and a ruler, of, a master of men, and you don't understand the fact that you need to be born again. You don't understand that this, I'm speaking to you in the spirit. If I speak to you in um, the earth today, how are you going to understand the things of spirit? You know, you don't understand the thing, those things. It says, um, verse 26, it says, I have many things to say to you and judge of you, but judge and to judge of you. But ye have, he that sent me is true. And I speak of the to the world those things which I have heard of him. He says, verse 27, so they understood not that he spake of the Father. They didn't know what he was talking about. They weren't of his. They didn't know what he was talking about. They were trying to kill him. They were trying to discredit him. They didn't know what they, what he was talking about. The same principle that applies to you. You know, that sometimes the world don't understand what you're talking about. To you, to them, you're speaking in in a, in a riddle. You're speaking in a parable. They don't get that unless the Holy Spirit decides to reveal it to them. And that's only to those that He has chosen. Okay, that he has called for them such a time. They'll never get it. Somebody, some people would never get this. They will never, some people would never get it. But your, our task is not whether they get it or not, but to be obedient to speak those things God has given to be to speak what the Father, our Father has given us. Okay? It says they understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus to them, Jesus unto them, when ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then, she can, then shall ye know that I am he, that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. He said to him again, look, I don't do, I'm not doing anything, you know, unless my Father, only those things that my Father has taught me, and I speak those things that he's taught me. You know, we need to get to a place that we don't say nothing or do anything unless God is directing us to do it. All of us. Me included. Get to a point where we don't do anything, don't say anything, don't go nowhere, don't make no decisions. Say, God, is it okay? David, <laughs> would ask God, is it okay for me to go to battle? Or is it okay for me not to go to battle? And God would give him instruction, either yay or nay. Go out, 
thou shalt be victorious and don't go up. All these things. But we get to a place because of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that we're listening to the Holy Spirit. That we're listening to him and we're being obedient to him and stuff like that. We're doing those things that he is calling because he's our father and he cares for us. Just like our God cared for Jesus. Guess what, y'all? He cares for us also. He cares for us, and us also. And he only wants what's best for us. He only wants what's best for us. Verse 29 says, and, he's, and he that sent me is with me, and the Father have not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. He said, I do always those things. Always means always. He said, I do always those things that please him. He said, he, he that sent me is with me. He promised never to leave us or forsake us. He's with us, y'all. You know, he sent you. God is with you. No matter where, where you're going, no matter what kind of situation you're in, no matter where, what country you were in, no matter <clears throat> none of those things, the Father is with you. Our Father is with us. You know, the Bible says that if God be for you, who in the world can be against you? What manner of man can stand up against God? our God? No one can stand up against God. No one can stand up against Jesus. Even demons tremble at the name of Jesus. In fact, every, the Bible talks about every knee shall bow in the presence of Jesus. Yeah. And then it says, as he spake these words, many believed on him. He said, as he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said the Jews, Jesus to the, those Jews which believed on him. He said, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And that's what we are. We are disciples of Christ because we are continuing in his world, we, his word. We are continuing in his teaching. We are continuing in the, 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 the Holy Spirit revealing. We are continuing in this thing. This is a continual walk. This is not now one and dumb and thank you. Okay, I'm saved. That's it. No, this is to be a, a, a process walk, an ongoing walk, a walk and everything so that God began to reveal things to a walk because to the point where he began to take away dead things that's in our life that's not good for us. You know, things that we are holding on to for years. God said, it's time for us to release those things now. You know, it's time for us to release those things and he's doing it for his name's sake that he would get all the glory. That every time place we walk, every place that we go, the people look at us and say, oh, wow, look what God did for them. Every miracle that Jesus done ever, y'all, somebody, it wasn't just for the person that the miracle was done, but for those to see with their eyes the miracles that Jesus can do. Every time that we, and he did that out of obedience to the Father, our Father. So what am I saying to us? That we have to get to a place that we become just automatically obedient. Okay, God. Yes, Father. Yes, Lord Jesus. Everything has to be a yes. Get to the point and stuff that we die. Paul said, I die daily. There's a dying daily process that has to take place in us because there's nothing good in this flesh that we live in. Nothing, y'all. This flesh will act up in a minute, and you can catch it on a bad day and stuff like that, and it may just cuss you out. It may cuss you out. There's no good thing in this flesh. So we have to get to a point that we allow the Holy Spirit to, 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 to do what it needs to do. You know, and the only way that we do is that we're constantly feeding the Holy Spirit. We're constantly meditating day and night. We're constantly in a place of worship and praise. We're constantly in a place of yielding to him, being obedient to him, not just psychopath, but being obedient to him. You know, it's not about what we do and stuff like that, but how we do towards it when it comes to the living God, when it comes to our Father. You know, there's something about when 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 um uh, uh, the aroma of praise and when uh, our life and uh, and everything is presented to God and everything like that. He's the one that can mold it and and to make it into that which He has designed. One of the hardest things that I found out for myself is being able to let go and let God. All my life, I've always been the type of person that like to be in control of everything. But when some things begin to happen in my life, I realized I, didn't, I had less control than I thought. And as I'm getting older, I be, learn how to lean more on him and le- less I'm going to lean on myself. You know, my expectation when it comes to God has changed. It had to. 
and everything. But I had to, we have to, I had to, you have to, sometimes we have to go through some things to get to that place. We have to go through some trials. We, we have to go through some tribulations. You know, we got to go through some craziness just to get to that place. But you know what? I tell people on a constant basis that I believe in an expected end. And that expected end is what God has ordained for me and ordained for you. You know, because I'm a son and you are a son and you are a daughter because he's our father. It's an all-inclusive thing. And not everybody has the right to say our father. Not everybody has the right to say our father. There are some of, some that's out there and that God don't even know. But they go through the, the motions and the slickness and then everything, and they sound good and they preach good and they do all the things, but they're not children of God. They're children of darkness. And unfortunately, they might be in a place that they don't even know that they're children of darkness. They don't even know. And, you know, for me, I'm looking at this, and I'm all time because I'm almost out of time. But for me, I'm looking at this, man, but this is a time for us as Christians to wake up. Some of us have been sleep so long and everything and stuff like that that we got sleep all in our eyes. You know what it's like it's all crusty, but you can't even open up your eyes to see what's in front of you. And God is saying to all of us, is that open up your eyes and see the glory of the Lord. And see that I have adopted you. And see, I consider you my son and my daughter. I consider you my heirs, my joint heirs. I consider you to be kings and queens. I consider you to be more than conquerors. I consider you to be all those things that I have ordained you to be. But first, you got to recognize who I am to you. You got to recognize that I'm doing a great work on you. I'm doing, not finished with you. I'm molding you and stuff like Yes, in the process of, 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 of clay being in the pot, I can imagine that it doesn't feel good. You know, and I'm speaking for myself that as God begins to go take me through a molding process that it doesn't feel good. But, but I know, but we have to know one thing for sure that our Father, when He does a work, you know, every time he finishes the work, he looks at it and it says, it is good. So he looks at us and says, it is good, all right, before we even realize that it's been good. <laughs> before we even come to terms that it's good, y'all. You know, it says in the Bible, back in John 8 and 13, he said, and ye should know the truth, and the truth shall, shall make you free. You know, it says you should know the truth, and the truth should make you free. He's presenting to the to the, these people at that time. He's presenting to us now the truth. Cause why? Because he is the truth, and he can set you free. He's presenting to you the truth. You know, he's presenting to you our Father. He's presenting to you that 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 you've been bought. He's presenting all those things. You know, one of the things that I was talking to somebody earlier and it made me realize, it said, you know what? God knows every tear that we shed. If the hairs on our head are numbered and everything, truly he knows every tear that we shed. You know, he truly he knows our good days and our bad days. Truly he knows, and I'm speaking for myself, the days that I really wanted to give up, you know, the, the one to throw in the towel, or the days I really want to hurt somebody. <laughs> you know, he knows those days, but still he considers us to be his children. Still, Jesus was willing to come and die on the cross for us, even though <laughs> he was rejected. The thing that we got to understand that they rejected him back then, but sometimes we reject him even now. We reject him, we never reject obedience to him. But when we reject Jesus, we also reject our Father. We reject him now. When God says go left and we go right, that's rejecting. We're rejecting his direction. And God wants us to, to, to fall in step with his plan because there's a plan in one of us. There's a plan that he has for us, y'all. There's a plan, you know, that he has for us. And for the unbeliever, this is the old opportunity, you know, not just today, but you know, in a second, we don't know when our last breath is going to take. Whoever you are, wherever, don't care what country you're in, don't care what you, how you was brought up and everything, Jesus Christ needs to be your Lord and Savior. 
And the way that you do that is not only confessing and believing with your heart and everything like that, but let him be a part of your life. Let him show you himself to you. Let the Holy Spirit become fear. The Holy Spirit is a gift for us. It's a gift, y'all. And in this day and time, we need the gift to operate us in us completely. And I believe that God is speaking to the body of Christ. He's speaking even to the unbeliever. He's speaking to the world. The question is, how many of you are listening to him? That, that, that there's a calling that goes, that's going on right now. There's a calling. He's looking for a few good men and women that are willing to stand, not only stand in the gap, but willing to be obedient, they're willing to go into the hedges and the highways and, comp- and comp- compare men. In other words, look, let me show you a more excellent way. Let me show you, let me tell you about the God that I serve. Let me tell you what he did for me. Let me tell you how he brought me out of darkness into a marvelous life. Let me be a testimony unto you. Let me be the advantage. In fact, my whole life, y'all, has to be a testament. Your life has to be a testimony, no matter where you go, because that's what our Father is requiring from us. That's what our Father is requiring from us. He wants you to know. He wants me to know, because to know, I've been going through some crazy things. I don't know about you, <laughs> but there's some heart, heartache days uh, and everything here recently and stuff like that. And I had to get to a point that I began to put everything at rest, you know, and I began to begin to realize, like, wait a minute, my father <laughs> is rich, you know, the cat on a thousand hills, but I had to get to those ones. And I think that's what God is saying. Get to a place when you understand who I am and who you are in me. Get to a place you understand what the, and I was talking to my cousin earlier about this, that, 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 that the meaning, the whole power about the death of Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, man. There is so much in there that we even have to touch the tip of the iceberg. Because if I think that if we really got the whole picture, if heavens will open up and just give us a glimpse of what it truly means, it's stuff to be to say that I am redeemed. I think most of us would just be constantly on our knees, constantly bow before the presence of the Lord, and know that God did something great and wonderful. That He He took something that was dirty and messed up and full of of, of junk and everything, and He began to clean those things out. Then He washed us whiter than snow. Then we begin to realize that God is doing those things to all, all of us in our families. And I can't go any further, and I'm not even finished with John, but because I, I really want to go back, get into this and everything. Because Jesus, I mean, I mean John eight and, and and six, seven and eight and nine, man, Jesus really talks about some things and, and everything like that. And, he, and I really don't have the time, okay? So I'm gonna have to end right here. Amen. But I pray, I pray this has been a blessing to you. Send me a line. Let me know. Um, this has been a blessing to you by going to winchristmasweek at gmail.com or give me a message on Facebook. Please share this broadcast. God is speaking to his people. God is speaking to me, man. God is speaking to his people. He is, and he's speaking loud and clear, but not all of us are hearing it. And if they, he wants to say, look, the Bible says that it's not his will that any man should perish. Not God's will that you, no, you should perish. You know, for all of us to be received into him. That's what he wants. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this word, God, that you have given to me, to the people of God. God, we pray that it would have been a blessing to somebody. God, we pray, God, that it would begin to stir up the gifts, the fruit of the spirit that's in your people. That the people will begin to wake up and realize, Jesus, that you are soon to come. That you, God, will get all the glory. That you will begin to save. That you will begin to deliver. That you will begin to heal. That even in the process, God, that you will show them the victorious. They are victorious, God, that you will begin to show us all, God, that we are the righteous of you, God, and because of Jesus Christ and because of you, God, and not because of ourselves. We can go and move to a higher heights in you and deeper depths in you because you have ordained it to be so. So, Holy Spirit, right now, we, we speak and we preach and we teach and we pray that if correction needs to come, that you will bring correction. But correction that don't lead to death. But correction that means the repentance of the heart, God. Not just with the mouth, God, but with the heart also. That we 
you, Lord Jesus, your people, will bow down before you, and God, and hold on to the horn of your salvation and not let go, because you, Lord Jesus, are doing a great work in it. So, God, we pray right now that this nation, God, will begin to understand that you are working, God, a miracle, that you are working, that you are healing, that you are delivering, that you are conquering. God, we know that the enemy is raging like a lion. We know that he's going back to and fro in the earth, trying to seek who he can destroy. But you, God, has established a thing. And you have said to me that we should live and not die. So I declare right now in the name of Christ Jesus that we should live and not die and declare the wondrous work of the Lord. That we should not be afraid of the terror of that of night but, or the hours by day. But we will stand strong in you, God. And open up our mouth like a trumpet and declare the ways of the Lord unto those, Lord Jesus, that they might know that the bomb in Gilead is you, Jesus. And without you, that it can't be done. That every one of us needs you. In fact, we need you more than anything else. We need you more than bread and water. We need you more than life itself, God. Without you, we are nothing. If you take our breath away, God, we no longer breathe. But if you continue to breathe into us, we will always give you the praise and the worship. We will serve you always. We will hold on to you, God. And not let go until you bless us. We thank you in advance, God. We do pray this prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Again, I want to welcome y'all that have been listening to the broadcast. Thank you for those that are listening online right now. Thank you for those who are listening to the archives, whether it's through Blog Talk Radio, all the other different medias. We pray, man, this this message, our Father, my Father, will be um, a word and we encourage you, because that's what we want to do on Wink Christian Speak Talk Radio. We want to encourage the saints of God. Yes, we want to open the doors to those that don't know Christ as the Lord and Savior, but we also need to the people of God are going through some major um, things right now, you know, and we got to understand why we're going through those things. We're going through those times, those things, because Jesus is soon to come. So the enemy is doing his job. Now it's time for us to do our house because we know in who we believe. And we know that the enemy is already defeated. And if the enemy is already defeated, we have to get to a place that we act like it. Okay? We have to get to a place that we act like that the enemy is defeated. There can be some, don't get me wrong, there are days where you're like, I oh, don't know. <laughs> but and not, and not, and not even a day, it has to be a second. One second, I oh, don't know. Okay, God, no, you got this. <laughs> we have to be that quick about it, man. We do. We can't, we can't, we cannot afford, no longer afford to wallow. We can't. We can't afford no longer to wallow in the woe is me and I don't know why this is happening. And we can't do those things, man. But you know, the Bible says we got we to get to a point that we count it all joy. <laughs> you know, and that's easier said than done because when you're going through stuff, you're like, I don't know why I can count this all joy. You know, <laughs> but, we, you know, and the way to count it all joy is to look for the outcome that he's, he, he is leading, that he's in control. And that's the outcome. Amen. God bless you. Again, thank you all for listening to With Christian Speak Talk Radio. Please be blessed and know that God loves you and I love you. Amen. Stay encouraged. Hold on. Don't give up. Amen. My time is up. So we're going to play a couple of commercials. Stay tuned to hear those and we are there. God bless you. I love you. Christian Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry. We are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. So go out to our website, that's www.whenchristianspeak.com, and click on the donation page. God bless you. <laughs> 